Okay, everybody, you saw in a previous video that these bees are getting too crowded and too hot inside of this nuke. I've only had it for two days. This is the second day I've had it. And um, by another hour or two from now, they will be crowding that front area like you saw in that previous video. So the president of our beekeepers association said that while I'm waiting for him to build another hive for me, that I could borrow this box. And this box is one that he uses for capturing swarms. It's, man, that is heavy. It is, uh, it's got a screen stapled right onto the bottom of it. But it's got a lot more room so these bees can uh, be a lot more happy while I'm waiting for an actual hive to come. So I'll show you here in the picture how I have this set up. And I'm going to put the frames that are inside this nuke directly into the middle of this. Of course, it's a 5-5 five -five split, so it can't go directly in the middle, but I'm choosing it like this because that side of the hive will get sunlight first and last in the day. It seems to make sense to me. I'm going to go about this very, very slowly because I know there's a queen in here. And the last thing I want to do is ruin my second nuke. So, I'm just going to slowly grab these frames. I'll come up real slow. You know I can't help but see if I can see the queen. They're already drawing comb on it. Well, I ain't got time to fool with this. I just want them in their new box. Very slowly, very carefully. Yeah, they are not only completely covering these frames, but they're all over the interior wall of this nuke box too, so. Oh, they really got some good comb drawn out on there. The man who let us capture this swarm, it's a swarm from off of uh, his hives, and these are the Russian breed of bees. And he was very highly spoken of how good these bees are. Um, specifically how resistant they are to disease. Um, he was talking to me about uh, how hygienic they are and just overall how happy he's been with them. He has not been um, a day-to-day -day diligent uh, beekeeper recently. So when they swarmed, and he had seen all the problems that we were having on our hive, uh, he didn't even think twice. He said, uh, come on over and capture this swarm. So that's what we did. Now this was a short nuke. It's only got four frames. I thought it had five. So I'm going to be one frame short, so I'm going to have to space this like a nine frame hive and deal with that. I'll try to get a tenth frame in here as soon as I can, but I don't have a, a tenth frame on me. So the only other frame I have is a drone frame for uh, encouraging dr uh, drone eggs for the purpose of uh, removing varroa mites. And uh, I don't think I want to put that in, but uh, if somebody else out there says Go ahead and put that in. It'd be better to have it and uh, remove the drones than to have just nine frames. I know there's plenty of people out there that do nine frame, uh, but I'm not particularly interested in it. I'm not trying to have real deep comb. I'd rather just stick with the uh, 
the traditional 10 frame. So, just let me know what you think. I suppose if I put that 10th frame, you know what, I'm going to do that. Stand by a minute. I'm going to go get, grab that 10th frame and I'm going to put it on an outside wall because I can always remove it and I've probably got a few weeks before they start putting comb on this far outside wall. So I'm going to go grab that. Okay, so I'm no massive expert on it, but this is a example of a, a drone brood frame. And the purpose of a drone brood frame is that the comb pattern is slightly larger than what you would find otherwise. And the comb pattern is how the queen knows what type of egg to lay. She'll either lay one that has been fertilized and therefore make a worker, or she will lay one that has not been fertilized, which will produce a drone or the males. And she, um, you're going to see me put this little spacer right here try to help out with ventilation. People were mentioning popsicle sticks, but I don't own a popsicle stick. I don't have one, but I do have these little mender plates, so I'm just going to use them. So anyway, I was telling you about the uh, drone comb. She'll lay males in there, and it's the males that varroa mites are attracted to. And so by having a frame full of nothing but drones, You can, oh yeah, they love me for that. Having a frame of nothing but drones, you can wait until it's capped off, and then you can put it in a deep freezer. And when you kill all those drones, you also kill the Varroa mites. So the purpose of this is just to make a trap for the Varroa mites. That's all it is. So anyway, just an interesting little thing that, that they do that. You can tell, I can tell from uh, the naked eye, the difference between the worker comb and the drone comb. But it's still quite interesting to realize that that small little difference is how the bees know that or that the queen knows that that's the kind of egg to lay. All right, so that's it. I should be a whole lot better off with this hive for a whole lot longer. So I'm going to add another one of these mender plates onto my old hive. I mentioned to you that I'm just going to leave the nuke box like that for the next 20, 30 minutes. And over that period of time, the bees will start fluttering and uh, let everybody know that the queen is in this location and they'll smell the pheromones and they will all walk their butts right back up into that bigger hive body. So there you go. So even though these ones haven't been having as big of an issue as these guys have, I'm still going to add a mending plate in as a spacer. And I guess I should say the reason I'm choosing this, everybody said if it's about an eighth of an inch, it's enough to promote the ventilation you're looking for but it's not big enough for a bee to squeeze through so they don't see it as another opening to the hive so it's already getting into the 90s here and it doesn't look like it's going to get any cooler anytime soon so I'm waiting for a screen bottom to come in so I can have some more ventilation on the bottom as well but for now what we're really trying to do is promote convection of air and so by right here by putting a little gap right here underneath the top feeder or your inner cover you're going to give the hot air a place to exit so here's here's basically how that's going to look like hot air comes out here and the cold air comes in through the entrance to the hive. So it's just gonna flow the air right through there. And, and that should be all that's necessary to 
keep the hive well ventilated. All right, everybody, we'll keep you up to date on how the things go, and uh, hopefully we'll come back in a few days and inspect the hive of Russians. And since they are a new swarm and they're putting on comb pretty good, hopefully in just a couple days we'll be able to come back to this hive and see some eggs. And it'll be great to see that. And let me tell you one of the uh, little tricks that's been shared with me. If this hive continues to have problems, if this hive either starts having workers that start putting out eggs, which would only ever be drone eggs, then we can take some drastic measures. We can take the bees out into a field far, far away and we can dump the entire hive. And just shake all the bees right off the frame and bring the empty hive box back here. Then we can take a frame of brood out of the Russians and put them in here. And the secret behind this is the workers that are laying eggs are only workers who have never left the hive. So wherever, whatever field we left them in, we left our problem out there. The other bees will find their way back home. And when they find their way back home, they'll see new eggs, but they'll still sense that there's no queen. So they'll turn those eggs into queen cells and hatch out a brand new queen from our other hive. So that's kind of a little trick for getting a queen without having to go, go and pay for one. I may not have explained it very well because it's just been explained to me. I've never read about it or researched it. That's the best I can recall uh, to what's been explained to me. So having two hives is going to give us that ability to judge one hive to another and see whether or not we think any problems are occurring and possibly let each hive support one another if we run into problems. So as always, I thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.